Now for the fun part. Let's add graphics capabilities with Raylib. So Raylib is a simple game programming library, and Raylib Zig provides Zig bindings for it. And we're going to need to add it as a dependency. But before we do, I want to talk a little bit about Zig bindings. Zig has excellent interoperability with C. Raylib is a library written in C. So we have two different options. We could essentially import Raylib directly using some of Zig's built-ins for working with C code, or we could use bindings. And bindings are essentially someone has done the heavy lifting of doing the C imports to import that C code into Zig, and then they repackage it in a way that is usually more Zig friendly. For our case, we're gonna stick with the Zig bindings, but I think what would be a really fun exercise if you are a more experienced Zig developer would be to import Raylib directly from C or to build this out as intended and then go back and replace the Raylib Zig bindings with C bindings and just see what it looks like and compare the difference. We have two different options to actually add this as the dependency. We can open our build.zig.zon and in the dependencies section, add a block of code. Um, another option is we could use zig fetch. So something like this, except this would not be, this is not the library we want to use. Instead, we want raylib zig, raylib zig. And then we have a couple different options here. Um, in our case, what we want is devel which is their development branch. So if we run zig fetch save and then a URL like this, so we're indicating, hey, this is a git URL, and then, hey, this is the uh, location that we are referring to, and then this is a little shortcut to say, hey, the branch, the commit, the SHA that we're looking for is whatever is after the Octothorpe. So in our case, we want the devel branch. What is the devel branch? That's a great question. I'm glad you've asked. So if we go to zig raylib, you can see that there is a devel branch right here. And this is the one that we want. So if you're using different versions of zig, you may want to point to different versions of the branch. You can point to specific commits if you would like. But in my case, I just want the development branch because we are using 0.15.2 and the development branch is slated to work with 0.15.2. So now that we run this, it should show up in our dependencies, right? That's how dependencies work. And we mentioned in the last video that our build.zig.zon file catalogs those dependencies for us. So if we take a look at build.zig.zon, you can now see that we have a dependency. We have a dependency on raylibzig. There's that URL that we specified, and you'll notice that it's a little different. So you can see that the ref now is devel, and then there's a specific commit hash. This is for the ability to rebuild our project predictably. So if we just had devel here, we might run into an issue where, and, and <laughs> to be honest, I'm running into this issue right now where the original implementation of Zig Invaders used a different commit, but I think it should be fine. So we'll continue with this one. Um, but where if you were to pull development and um, someone pushes up a change to the devel branch and it breaks things and you try to build, you would fail to build because you are now pulling a version that is broken, even if it once worked for you. So these commit hashes help you pin that to a specific, hopefully working commit. Unfortunately, one of the most frustrating parts about Zig for new developers, um, and maybe this is just my own opinion when I started learning Zig, is that this isn't enough. So we've added it to our dependencies, similar to how you might add a package to your package JSON in node or a project to your pyproject.toml in Python or whatever you're working with. But we actually have to make it available to our executable. This is not enough. So the question becomes, how do you do that? Well, if you remember from our last video, we were looking at our executable here in our build.zig. So what we can do is in our build.zig, if you haven't opened this yet, this is just the build.zig in the root, after we specify our target and optimize options, which are up here, what we can do is come down here and we can add a dependency. So we can say raylibdep is equal to b.dependency raylibzig. Thank you, Copilot. That was actually helpful. And then we want to specify our target and we want to specify our optimize. 
And now we want to write const raylib is equal to raylib dep dot module. Yep. Raylib. And what this is doing is saying, hey, take that module that we have. So the module that we're defining right here, which points to a dependency. That would have been bad, which points to a dependency. And what I want to do is pick a module from that dependency. And this module is called Raylib. And then I'm assigning that module to Raylib. We can also create a Raylib artifact, which is going to be Raylib dep dot artifact Raylib. We have some unused local constants. This is one nice thing about Zig. It will warn you anytime you have code that is unused, um, generally because that is the sign of a bug. Uh, if you have code that you have written, you probably intend to use it somewhere. So if it's going to be ejected by the compiler, you will be warned about that. If you're really observant, you notice something I said there. Ejected by the compiler. You might also be a little confused because we're in essentially uh, uh, the Zig equivalent of a make file. So this is actually all valid zig code. You can write whatever zig code you want in your build.zig. So if you want to get crazy with how you uh, crawl directories to determine what files should be included as a part of your build process, you can write that here. It's really actually nice and easy to do as long as you're comfortable doing that with zig. It's super powerful to be able to write your build scripting in the same language that your actual program is in. Now we want to find the executable import section. We've seen this before, and it's right here. And we want to add our Raylib. So if I come here and say name, actually, excellent. Thank you again, Copilot. So what I'm doing is saying name is equal to Raylib, and the module points to that Raylib module. So we've created our executable here via the b.addExecutable method. And what we want to do now is add, and what we want to do now is link our Raylib artifact into our executable. So we can say exe.link library Raylib artifact. I'm going to go ahead and write and quit. And now I can do zig build. And this should take a minute because it's going to download and compile Raylib. Actually, that was pretty quick for me. But I also do have Raylib already on my machine from uh, different builds. That being said, the library is actually quite small. So it might not take too long for you either. Once that completes, we will be ready to create our game window, which we will do in the next lesson.